after setting up your directory connection, that is the connection to the RDAP system successfully, you can now configure uh, the mapping between the directory attributes and the SAP user management fields uh, using the transaction code and LAP map. As different directory store services also use uh, different schemas for storing the data, um, you must determine which SAP data fields correspond to which directory attributes. So what I mean to say is that the, the fields that exist or the information that exists on uh, the directory side, you have to determine which of that information you would like to populate in SU01 transaction code when you create the user ID. So for example, you might want to determine whether you want to uh, populate the department field or not, whether you want to populate the function field or not, uh, the call center field or not. So you need to make that determination uh, before you start uh, uh, do, mapping the uh, fields between SAP system and the LDAP system. Now, now this need not always uh, result in one-to-one -one mapping. Uh, and that is the mapping between uh, the SAP fields and the LDAP attributes and it not be you know, one to one mapping. Your field can be mapped to uh, several attributes on the directory side and the actual directory side. Mm. The attributes assigned to the fields uh, must also exist in the directory. So that is why we import or uh, we extend the schema and we send the schema file to the LDAP team so that in the LDAP uh, uh, tree uh, at in the list in the LDAP attributes list it also contains SAP related of, uh, attributes so that uh, the values entered in those fields on the LDAP side can populate into on the SAP side. Now you could use an existing LDAP uh, field, uh, existing attribute uh, to populate the field in SAP. It's not necessary that for every uh, SAP field you need to uh, use an uh, SAP attribute on the LDAP side. You can use an LDAP attribute itself to populate a field uh, if it is appropriate. Now let us go and execute the transaction code LDAP map. Now you get to the display server name screen. Uh, now click on the change display icon on the toolbar and then double click, double click on the mapping uh, folder, uh, mapping folder on the display dialog structure column. Uh, Double click on the dialog structure column in the mapping folder. Now you get to the mapping over your screen. And in this screen, you can enter the object classes for the data entries uh, representing users, and you can then map the attributes of these entries to the SAP user master record fields. Now, in the mapping over your screen, uh, click on the import proposal icon on the toolbar to import the SAP recommended uh, data fields. So let's click on that icon. And if it is the first time, you get some different message, but here you're talking to replace the existing because I deleted the word, what, it, what was already there and uh, re-importing uh, re the proposal. So click on yes now. Now, if you look at the columns here, these are the different fields in SC01. If you look at those field names, 
and you compare it to the technical field names of the SU0 and uh, transaction codes, uh, uh, this will be the field names there. Now, this column is what is are, are the attributes on the Active Directory side. So, if you extend the schema, then if you scroll down, you will you will find the SAP related uh, uh, fields here, the attributes here. So, these are part of the schema files that you send to the LDAP team. The SAP related ones, they begin with the letters SAP. The ones that don't, for example, uh, the nickname or uh, the title, mail, uh, given name, these are all, uh, these attributes are from the Active Directory side by default. So, for example, when you, the entire thing works out, let's say you configure it and you map it, and uh, you don't change any of these, for example, title. So whatever is entered in the title uh, field on the Active Directory side, that value will be populated in the, uh, will get populated in the function field of SU01, for that matter, uh, for example. Uh, another example is, you know, for example, is uh, uh, the on the Active Directory side, uh, whatever value is available in the OU field, that will get populated in the department field and the SS01. Same thing with email ID. Whatever you have in the mail field on the Active Directory side, it will get populated in the email field in SS01. Now, if you want to change this field to map to some other fields on the Active Directory side, you could do that. So what you could do is you double click on it and then change the attribute here that you want to uh, use. Now, one of the key things that you want to remember when you do SAP to AD integration is that uh, all the user IDs that exist on the Active Directory side need not be created on the SAP side. So that is why it is very essential that we use the SAP attribute, SAP user name, on the Active Directory side. Otherwise, you know, you could use uh, the SAM account name that is the attribute for user ID uh, on the Active Directory uh, side to populate uh, the user ID field in SAP. Now, we are going to do that, uh, the SAM account name. We will use the SAM account name for now to populate and create the user IDs. Now, let us use this fields because at this point of time uh, uh, the SAP schema is, has not been updated on the uh, Active Directory side so we cannot use SAP username to map the fields. So let us go and use the SAM account name for uh, uh, creating the user IDs on SAP when we are on the synchronization program. Now, if you look at some of these attributes, some of these fields, these are some very important ones. Some of them are important. So, so this filtering field uh, checkbox is used uh, for uh, when you synchronize, run the synchronization program, and if you want to run the program using some filters, uh, you can. You have to you select the fields that you want to use for filtering. Uh, so you do the mapping here, to, uh, uh, you set the mapping indicators uh, here which specify the purpose of the mapping on this particular screen. Now this is required in all uh, uh, special cases such as if and the SAP data field is used in uh, two mappings and is therefore mapped to two different attributes of the LDAP uh, com compatible directory service. Uh, the contents, for example, the contents of uh, uh, SAP data field BAPI name, uh, if you go up, uh, the BAPI name, for example, uh, in the username field, 
uh, structure, not the field structure, uh, can be written to various attributes during the export. Uh, now, when importing, uh, if you see here, the CN attribute uh, and the SAP, news, SAP username attributes on the uh, other hand, for example, you need to, you must define uh, which of these attributes uh, is to fill the SAP data field BAPI name in the username structure. So, for example, the third one would be the, uh, if you look in this case, is the SAM account name. So, you need to determine which of these two, three fields, for example, would be used for uh, populating the SAP user ID uh, field name. Now, if you say, let's say you collect, select both, right? If you select uh, SAP username and uh, and uh, the SAM account name, for example, see what happens. If I go back to set the, uh, so this is what you get. You get an error. So you could use only one username uh, structure for populating the user ID. So I'm, for our demo purposes, we are going to use uh, the SAM account name. That is the uh, attribute for user ID on the LDAP side to populate and create the user IDs in SAP. So let's take that. Now you can use the rest of the fields for uh, for filtering. You know, if you want any other field uh, as part of your filter mechanism, uh, you could use that to create user IDs. So you set the indicators here. So once you set the indicators here, um, you click on uh, back account. You still have a problem here. So let's go and check what happened with, so this SAM account name is fine. The problem is with uh, the SAP username. So let us go and uncheck this uh, for that matter. And uh, let's go back now. Now it works. Now once you set the indicators, uh, properly, click on save. So you have set the mapping indicators uh, right now, but this is not enough for synchronization, uh, for getting the user IDs or user information in SAP. Uh, so the next step in this whole process would be to uh, synchronize uh, the direct server with the SAP system. So you have to uh, set up synchronous synchronization uh, mapping indicators on uh, indicators uh, for uh, user ID information.